So I was asked by Josef to talk a little bit about myself, how I came into politics, um, into the IFD, and um, how it feels, which experience I have as a young person being a conservative. I would call myself a right wing and why I think this is a good word, actually, I will explain. And um, of course, everyone is happy to talk about oneself, but also I will try to uh, make a few statements on our political agenda, because this is, of course, intermingled. Um, so quickly about myself, I um, studied economics uh, in Moscow and in Austria. I um, am economic policy advisor for the IFD parliamentary group uh, in Bavaria, for the IFD in Germany. I'm a speaker for economic policy of the IFD, so very involved in those uh, matters. I'm the head of the, I'm a member of the board of the IFD Upper Bavaria and a uh, member of the IFD youth movement, Junge Alternative. So I'm really happy to be here uh, because the youth is, as already said, the future of the right-wing movement, of the conservative movement. And so the question was, how did I come into uh, the IFD? How did I come into politics? And actually, uh, quite in, I've, I thought about this, yeah, because my, my parents are actually quite liberal, yeah. They are, my father is very businesslike, yeah. Um, my mother, um, also she, she used to be very green, let's say it like that, in her political views. Now she will be voting AfD, of course, as my father, both of them. Uh, but um, so how did it happen? And then I thought about it. And then the answer was uh, one of the reasons why I came into politics and why I came into right wing politics as well was Tomasz Masaryk. And of course, it was not him personally, but it was his actions, his policy. He invited uh, Russian intelligentsia in the 1920s and 1930s of the white emigre intelligentsia into uh, uh, Czechoslovak Republic. And as you might know, they were very, uh, very intelligent uh, people, uh, thinkers. And I always was very keen in uh, learning about philosophy and uh, the Russian Christian philosophy of the interwar period is something which I admired. I read a lot about uh, Pavel Savits, uh, Petr Savitsky, for example, who lived in Prague for the 20s and uh, up until he died in 68 in Prague. So he lived here all his life uh, after the immigration. Ivan Ilin, for example, as a famous Russian philosopher. And over this, I came into, uh, into uh, politics and into conservatism and writing ideas. And so it was Tomas uh, Masaryk in the sense, but also there are two other schools which I learned to love, which is for one is this the Freiburg School, or it's called Order Liberalism, which is the school which stands behind German social market economy. People like Ludwig Erhard, if you have heard, and uh, of course also the Austrian school, Hayek, Mises, so very freedomly, very liberal economic school. And I understand as your party also is very, in the good sense of the word, I would say freedomly liberal in the sense, uh, so to have a free market economy. And the other uh, thing is, which is uh, which I'm very interested in, in and became interested is the conservative revolution in Germany, which is uh, often also a uh, school of thought of the 1920s. Uh, people like Oswald Spengler, if you might have heard, you know, the the uh, the end of the, of Europe, for example, was one of his books. And um, and I would say the. the uh, Freiburg Austrian School of Economics and the conservative revolutions are two of the fundaments of the IFD thinking maybe if one of course no one is really too deep into this but it is a kind of fundament especially especially if you talk about, about young people young people I think also with you are generally more interested into theory into philosophy than the older party members who don't really, are not really interested in this and <clears throat> You know, uh, the left-wing left -wing politicians, activists, they always like to call themselves rebels, you know. They are the rebels, they are the, the, the activists who are fighting against the system. But is that true, you know? Is that really true? Think about it. If you have behind yourself all the major political parties who support your agenda, if you have behind yourself all the international corporations, you know, Pride Month, Pride Month for example, every July now, if you have all the mainstream media, and I think it's the same in, uh, in, in all of the countries who are represented today, um, are you really a rebel? No, the left wings are not rebels anymore. They are part of the system. They are the system. They are the empire, for example. Uh, they get the support from above, pushing the gender ideology, pushing the climate ideology, and pushing, in a sense, the socialist 
ideology and agenda. And we, we the youth, we the right-wing and freedomly youth, we are the new rebels. And think about it, it's crazy, because uh, we, we are the freedom fighters. And uh, we uh, support ideas which are now thought about to be not normal, to be rebellish. You know, when, uh, when people 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago said, uh, I support the idea of having a family, that a man is a man and a woman is a woman, that I want to have children, that I want to have a single, oh, that I want to have a one home for my family, that I want to drive a car with an internal combustion engine. That was something uh, really uh, boring. Now, it's, if you say that, you are the crazy one, you are the rebel. And actually, I'm very, very proud about this, that we are fighting for the right things and we are rebels for this. And I, I don't know, I would like to ask you, do you feel yourselves as, uh, as prolongers, as people who continue the tradition of rebellion? Are you the new Hussites? Are you moving forward the flame of the Prague Spring? Are you the prolongers of the Velvet Revolution? I think it's something very beautiful that you have in your history. And I think you are the ones who are fighting against this new socialism. I don't know, that's what I'm asking you. I am for sure that the AfD in Germany is uh, seeing itself and is doing the uh, prolonging and putting, bringing into the future the idea of the, of the liberal patriotic revolution of 1848, of the uh, revolution of 1989, and even of the um, 20th of July attack on Hitler. You know, and we are having every 20th of July, if you had a Valkyrie, maybe you saw the film, about it uh, um, against Hitler, this attack of German patriots. And uh, we, we support these ideas, we celebrate them. And last week I had the honor to be in Prague and uh, uh, I'm a Christian Orthodox and I went to the uh, Orthodox church and then only afterwards I found out and I was very happy that it was the church here in Prague where your freedom fighters, Josef uh, Babic, uh, Babcik and Jan Kubisch fought to the last bullet for the freedom of uh, the Czech Republic. And I didn't know that, that was at this church. It was a coincidence as only God can make coincidence. And uh, I was very happy to commemorate them there because all the patriots as we are, we can support and we only we truly support each other's cultural identity, freedom and sovereignty. So in 2021, quite late actually, uh, I entered into the AfD. Uh, 2013, uh, it was founded. So your party was founded 2015, right? Uh, so two more years, and you will have a first 10 year anniversary. We had it just recently, and uh, I wish you all the best. In AfD, you know, people uh, in Germany already accepted us as part of the political establishment. We are already part of the system, kind of, yeah? Of course, we are the, uh, uh, the priors, no one will want to talk with us, and so on, but still, in the back of the minds, people have already accepted us, and the same will happen with SPD. And as I heard, it even happened more so. So in 2021, I became a party member, and uh, the, the question was, why did I become a party member? Um, one aspect was because at that point of time, there were discussions in the media that the AfD should be uh, observed by the, our internal domestic intelligence. Uh, and they were giving opinions that the AfD extreme is extremist and right wing and whatever and racist and so on and we want to uh, abolish democracy and all that nonsense. And uh, just just for a matter of fact, there are only think I think four countries in Europe where the internal intelligence service gives an opinion on the political opposition: Russia, Belarus, Turkey, and Germany. Yeah, and so I'm not feeling bad about the, their opinion about us. And I said, now is the point of time because, as I said, we are the true rebels uh, and uh, uh, we are fighting for the right cause. Because what are we actually fighting for? And I think I can, I think we all fight for the same things here. We fight for our identity to preserve a cultural heritage into the future. We fight for the freedom of our citizens, of uh, the sovereignty of our nations. Um, and we fight for prosperity, for our way of economic prosperity, of our free market economy. And within the past three years, all these things were trampled on by the system, the migration crisis, which destroys our cultural identity, the corona crisis, which was used to destroy our freedoms, so certainly citizen freedoms, yeah, mask mandates, vaccination mandates, lockdowns, whatever. 
and the energy crisis, which of course is caused not by the war in Ukraine, but by the economic policy in Europe, the Green Deal and so on. You know, we just last week we shut off our last uh, nuclear power stations in Germany. And now we are importing even more uh, power from Czech, uh, from Czech Republic and you don't know where, how to get your power from. And as I said today, it will be a big problem. Um, so that's what we are fighting for. And of, of course, and as already has been said, it is difficult and you get information. So you have this article in the media saying the activists are coming from Moscow or whatever to t t teach you how to think and what to do. You're being attacked constantly. But there are also these moments, small moments, where you really feel you're doing something right. And I would like to share uh, one moment with you. Uh, it was elections in Germany in 21. And friends of mine, we were hanging up posters of the IFD. And then a young girl, young, beautiful woman, like the woman here today, came by in her bicycle and she had braids, you know, braids. And in the German, uh, there's a, there are German think tanks. And one left-wing think tank wrote like a brochure. If your daughter has braids, yeah, uh, then be very careful. She might be right-wing conservative, you know. Be very careful with her. And I looked at her and she, and she asked us, what are you doing? And for a split second, I looked at her and I thought, okay, she has braids. She could be either conservative or she could be like a climate, you know, like this Greta Thunberg kind of girl. But I said, say the truth. I said, we're putting up the poster of the IFD. And she said, yes, that's cool. And that's the small moments when people come to you, you have an info stand in the city and an elderly woman comes to you, thank you that you exist. Mm. This, is, this is everything what is worth for what you are fighting for. So I'm working now also in the Bavarian State Gov uh, Parliament uh, for the IFD uh, club. Um, I think you have the same also every motion we bring in, the main parties don't approve of them, yeah, but then the conservative or kind of conservative parties, they copy them like one or two weeks later, you know. And what I always do, I write the economic pol policy motions, um, I put in a lot of research, I put a lot of links to research because all the data, all the scientific data, the research supports what we say. All the left-wing uh, things is made up. We have the data, we have the science on our side. And this is one thing I would like to ask you or to, to, to keep in mind, please, when you work, of course, bringing out our perfect ideas is very important. Very, this is the most important thing, I agree absolutely. But also keep in mind, we have to destroy this argument that we are populists in the sense that we have no understanding of economics or policy. No, it's not true. We have very good understanding. We have the arguments, we have the facts, we have the data. But we need even more sound research. We need our own research, our own right-wing uh, freedom leader research. We need our own theory, our own economic theory, our own political theory, and so on. And that's why institutes like this one are very important. And I'm a very strong admirer of Viktor Orban. And he, uh, just, uh, I guess, last year, um, he uh, published his 12 points on how any conservative right-wing movement uh, should be successful. And one of those 12 points is that institutions, 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 because politicians come and go, but institutions remain. So this is my advice. Please build up institutions. We have our own institution, the Desiderius Erasmus Stiftung, my own MIVI Institute for Economic Policy Advice. You need sound economic policy, you need sound theory, you need sound research. So this is very important and it should be supported. Um, one pre last point I would like to make. Uh, about this uh, this allegation that we are racists, you know. Uh, my name is Yuri. It's a very Bavarian name, of course. Yeah, I'm always saying that uh, when I'm presenting myself. Um, so, of course, people in the IFD make jokes, you know. Everyone makes jokes and so on. Yeah, where, where, when do we get the money from Putin and so on? Yeah, and I say back, just wait a little bit. Just one, one more month, we'll get it and so on, you know. But jokes aside... And never, never, ever from the right wing, uh, from the IFD, I was uh, being like, uh, people were saying something bad to me. And only all the racist comments about my identity came from the left wing side, from the Greens, from the climate activists. They say, oh, well, your name is Yuri, go back to Russia, you know? And that's, I think, that's, we see it here. We see it here, yeah? Uh, Diana, I understood that you have Armenian... Uh, origin or heritage roots, yeah, and you, so you are one of the leaders of the youth movement of the SPD, you know, and it's crazy. 
your leader, Tommy Okamura, I read it, I guess I read it in the article which was written about uh, this conference, yeah, he is being called the Samurai of Prague. <laughs> and I told it to my friends in the, in, in the parliamentary group, they were also like co-workers, young people, many of them are in the youth movement, they said, you know, he's called the Samurai of Prague, and they all said, that's fucking cool. Uh -huh. So you need to own this brand. You need to own it and be proud. Proud of it and proud of this brand. Of course, all this talks about that we are racist is absolute nonsense. It's, it's crazy, yeah. Don't, don't even listen to it. Um, by the way, uh, just recently we had this, we have, of course, we support uh, of a technology open mobility mix. So if you want to drive an e-car, please buy one. But no subsidies. If you want to buy an internal combustion engine, of course, don't prohibit it. Yeah, we say everything is uh, possible. And then we had this huge poster which is written on it, IFD and uh, free ride for diesel engines. And I had to uh, move it from the office building in the parliament to my own office building, which is like 200 meters. And there's a taxi stand. And I don't know how it's in your country. I guess it's quite similar. Uh, the taxi drivers are usually not uh, autochtonic ethnicity. Yeah? In Germany, they are Turkish uh, Egypt people and so on, so mostly Muslim people. And I went with this big, big poster, and I couldn't believe it. All the taxi drivers were going like this, yes. So the people, they want us, they need us, the people. And we have to be more proud, we have to be going more out to them and show them they really want us. And uh, one last word about the youth. You know, again, I'm, I'm talking a little bit about uh, how it is going on in our party. Maybe you can correlate, maybe not. Uh, in our party, in the IFD, we kind of sort of have this divide uh, of those which are allegedly more liberal and uh, those which are allegedly more nationalistic, which is not true. Yeah, it's more about like political, uh, personal, uh, you know, um, loyalties, not about real ideology. They are all quite similar. Uh, but this is kind of still true. Yeah. Um, and I would call them the old guard, the conservatives. They are conservatives because they have an old understanding of the world of the 1980s and they want to go back to this. They want to conserve. Yeah. And I think the word conservatives is for us not really applicable because we are not conservatives. We don't want to conserve something in the past. We want to bring this, the traditions, the culture into the future. So we are right wing. Yeah. We have this flame we bring in the future and all the young people in the IFD if they are more from this one wing or the other wing, we all understand each other perfectly. So I'm more a liberal kind of person, but I have many friends who are more nationalistic. We have no problems at all. We all work together and we know and we see we have this unity. So this is something I, uh, I need to give to you. The, the younger generation in the SPD is the future of the party. And finally, what we need uh, is of course, one thing for the right-wing movement, we all need to work together, is that we need to create a vision of the future. You know, the, why is the climate movement so successful? Not only because they get billions of billions of dollars from Bill Clinton Foundation and whatever, but, or um, what's his wife's name again, Hillary Clinton Foundation, but because also they have this very enticing idea of an utopia they're building, yeah? They're nothing less than saving the planet. It's a big idea, I guess, yeah? It's a big uh, ideology, but everyone can participate. If you don't eat meat, if you don't fly, th then you save the planet. What do we have? Do we ha so if you say we want to go back to the uh, Czech Republic of the 1990s, that's not attractive. If you want to go back to Germany of the 1980s, that's not attractive to the young people. We need a new vision. What is our vision for a future and what is our writing vision for a uh, Europe of fatherlands, and we need to discuss this, and we need to give our common vision. Of course, we need to preserve our national identities, our cultural identities, but we need to, need to have one common approach toward it. And this is uh, the final like word I'd like to give with you. Look at this panel. You are not alone. You are not alone. We are a very strong movement all across Europe, all across the West, all across the world of patriots. We are together and I am certain, I am certain that within 10 years we will be the ruling parties in Europe and the future of Europe will be right-wing, will be freedom, will be our national parties. Thank you.